Hello, I'm Gary Pinnell, and we want to study 2 Corinthians chapter 12 today. So I hope that you're rip-roaring and ready to go. Uh, we have um, something very interesting that I think that is going to uh, whet your appetite for something else in there. And it's right at the beginning of uh, chapter 12. So let's go ahead and look at that. It says that it is doubtless not profitable for me to boast. All right. So Paul is not finished in giving his background as to his references as to why they should listen to him in Corinth. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know, God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Okay, so he says, I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago whether in the body I do not know, or whether out of the body I do not know. God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. Okay, so Paul's already said that he's going to talk about uh, revelations, visions and revelations. Well, this is one that he has, that he had 14 years ago. And we're going to look at it in Acts. And some people are thrown off by the fact because they don't understand that Paul uses what is called hyperbole, uh, sarcasm. and But at the same token, as he said, he is trying to be humble, even though he's giving his references uh, on why they should listen to him in this letter. And that is that the apostles, if you look at John in the book of John, he never really says, I, John, like that. He, he doesn't say that. Uh, he talks about uh, the one whom Jesus loved the one who leaned on Jesus' chest is, and at the Last Supper and so on. And so uh, they, all of the apostles are extremely humble and people can't imagine how Paul would go to such lengths. And so uh, even somebody I was, I'm going to talk about uh he even thinks he's talking about somebody else. He's not talking about himself. And you could think that when you're reading, but Paul is separating himself from himself in order to talk about himself. Now, we do that uh, when we talk about a person in the third person, okay, that uh, we can have a story, and it could be actually all about us, but it's in the third person. In other words, we talk about it as if it's somebody else. And that's a part of speech. Now, but I believe with all my heart, Paul is talking about himself. So we're going to go back and look at that passage in uh, Scripture. And hopefully you will understand exactly what Paul is saying here. So we're going to go to... All right, uh, chapter 14 of Acts. Okay, so, and the, right here at uh, 19. Okay, it says, Then Jews from Antioch and Iconium came there, and having persuaded the multitudes. So these were when Paul was ministering in different parts of a uh, in his ministry the jewish people that were dead set against him from asia 
that wanted to stone him or wanted to kill him, wanted to stop the message of Jesus being raised from the dead. They stoned Paul. So they stirred up the multitude, persuaded the multitudes, which was multitudes more than you can count. They stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing him to be dead. Now, supposing him to be dead, they were just sure that he was dead, or else they would have kept throwing rocks at him. And he was dead, as far as what we can tell here. Because, however, when the disciples gathered around him, he rose up and went into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Okay, so that is what we believe that Paul is talking about here in 2 uh, Corinthians. And he says that uh, God knows such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And I know such a man, yes, because it was him. Whether in the body, he wasn't sure if he was actually uh, had died or not, uh, or out of the body, if he had died, which we believe that he did die, I do not know, God knows. How he was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such a one I will boast, yet of myself I will not boast, except in my infirmities. Okay, so let's try to work through this. So Paul is talking about himself, but in a very, very humble way. Uh, he's just, he didn't even, he hasn't even talked about this before. This is 14 years later. But here, the Corinthians really kind of forced him to talk in such a way that he's talking right now. And so he can show them, you know, God accepts me. Uh, in fact, I was uh, in having a revelation or went to heaven. Uh, the third paradise would be heaven. And there is uh, something that we need to think about very seriously. Now, today, there are several books that have been written. And uh, you need to be aware of these. There are some people now on the internet, and I don't just listen to anybody. I don't just go to any uh, one that talks about someone that died and went to heaven. That's called a near-death experience. And, um, but there are some that are legitimate and we have actually doctors are changing their view, uh, many doctors and saying that, yes, this does happen because before they thought, oh, well, maybe they're just imagining it. Maybe there was uh, uh, some way it could happen, but now is this proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that this does happen to people. Uh, and they uh, see the things around them in the operating room, uh, things that they would not see, they would not be able to report on, and so on. Actually, there's several books, and so I want to tell you, these are written recently, and under a very careful observation as a scientist would do these experiments and so on. And that is uh, people who have actually died and risen, uh, are not, they're not resurrected, but they came back to life. It wasn't God's time for them to die yet. It says in scripture, it's appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. But th there is for each one of us as individuals, there is a time that God says, okay, their time on earth is finished. But in this case, it wasn't time for them to pass away. So uh, you have tremendous testimonies. You have, first of all, 
uh, a little boy who was four years old, and uh, they don't claim that he died in this one, but he did see uh, a vision of certain things, he, of heaven and so on. And uh, this was, the book is called, um, <laughs> I just meant to skip my, name, uh, my memory for just a minute, but uh, heaven is for real. Heaven is for real. Okay, so that's one that you need to uh, look at. And there's actually... Um, that is available in print and also movie. There's another one, and that's 90 Minutes in Heaven. And that one, I've read both the books, okay, from cover to cover. And there's also the movie. Actually, the books in that one seem to be better than the, the movie. But uh, there, uh, 90 Minutes, he was in heaven. He's run over by a semi his car was, and he was proclaimed dead several times. And uh, and then the Lord raised him to life, and so he tells about his visit to heaven. Well, now, some people say, well, because Paul said it's unlawful for me to uh, explain this, or it, it, it is not lawful for a man to utter. Well, I think this could be translated in one sense a little better, uh, in the sense that it's impossible. All these people that come back say, we can tell you about it, but there's not words and language to be able to explain what heaven is like. So that's possibly what he's meaning, or possibly Paul was not allowed to go into detail. Uh, the Lord didn't allow him. Some of these people... Uh, when they've gone to heaven uh, for several years. They don't talk about it, but then the Lord gives them the okay. Other people, right away, they're able to talk about it. And these are people that are not, uh, their motive when they gave their story was not to gain money or to get a book or offer or something like that. And so uh, Paul is sharing that with people. The Lord himself took me to heaven. And I was able to see things that uh, other people were not able to see. Okay, so we need to understand that. Uh, let's see. Manasseh uh, Lapa, uh, God bless you, and thanks for getting on. And Judy, Gail, the Lord bless you, sister. And now we're in uh, Second Corinthians chapter 12. We've just talked about... Paul's visit to heaven that we believe it's talking about from Acts chapter 14. And we looked at that, but now let's go on. So Paul is talking to the Corinthians still. There's some that still doesn't believe that uh, he is actually able to talk to them as an apostle and so there are a few that still didn't agree that Paul should be teaching them. So he's going on and he's giving his resume. He's giving his history and why he, they should listen to him. Verse 6, For though I might desire to boast, I will not be a fool. And he thought it's foolish just to talk about yourself and things that have happened in your life. But now he's going to move on and share some more things like that. For I will speak the truth, but I refrain lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. All right. Uh, people who are serving the Lord, they don't like to uh, actually go into great detail what all God has done for them, not because it's not true, it is true, but they're just humble. And, um, and I always forget the lady's last name, but Heidi, uh, they've made a movie or making a movie about her life, and she didn't want them to make a movie about her life while she was still alive. She said, you know, that's something you should wait till after. But uh, she finally allowed them to do that. But I remember her talking about many miracles the Lord has done through his, her life and um, is doing and 
the same thing in the book that I read and I mentioned before is anointed for burial and two young people that were uh, graduates of Oral Roberts University went to um, Thailand and um, um, Cambodia went to Cambodia before they fell to communism and the miracles they saw were like what's in the book of Acts and they saw at least two people raised from the dead among uh, others the eyesight was given back to them and so on and in fact Heidi she saw a little girl on the street uh, maybe even I would think maybe about 12 I'm not sure she gave the age but she said that she went up to her and she realized that she was just sitting there and nobody was coming around her or anything and this little girl was blind and uh, she asked the little girl what her name was and the girl said I don't have a name she thought well that's strange and she went over and asked some of the village people where this girl was and they said no, she doesn't have a name. Her mom didn't give her a name because she was born blind. And uh, so Heidi just went and she wanted to pray for her. And she went over and asked if she could pray for her. And the girl allowed her to do that. And as she was praying for her, this girl received her sight. And Heidi didn't even want to talk about that. That's the way Paul was. But God did not just that miracle, but many miracles and is doing many miracles through certain individuals and uh, that are being used mightily of the Lord. And that's the way Paul was. He was used mightily of the Lord. And now he's going to having to, he has to share some of these things, even though he doesn't want to. For he says, in verse seven, and lest, okay, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Okay, concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, um, we believe here that Paul is talking about, and say when I say these things, uh, it's because I've studied the word for many years. And uh, I've listened to other people and studied with them into this particular subject and others like it, where there are questions. And uh, this is, we believe that this was his eyesight was bad. Paul saw many people healed uh, and miraculously healed. He saw, uh, I think, at least two that he raised from the dead through the power of the Lord, besides all the other miracles that God did through him. But uh, this one, the Lord did not heal his body. And we believe that it was his eyesight because he told the Macedonians, you, would, you were willing to even pluck out your own eyes and give them to me. Well, why would he say that except that uh, there was something wrong with his eyes? Other times he said, like, you see how I write with such large letters when he signed his name and so on. Uh, because he couldn't see very good and he but uh, the Lord was gracious to him and he uh, said that my grace is sufficient for you you can uh, still serve me and other people be healed I'm you know paraphrasing here but that uh, so just keep trusting me and uh, it, this will help keep you humble and I don't know, there's just, if you're working in the ministry, you realize there's sometimes the Lord does things to keep us humble because he doesn't want us to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, to realize the things God is doing. There are miracles that are done sometimes, but uh, 
It's the Lord doing it. It's not us. And that's what Paul is saying. And so here uh, he's going through some very private things, some very personal things. But therefore, he says, I take pleasure in infirmities. Uh, he goes through times of sickness. Titus, he left him at uh, Troas, I think he said, uh, he was sick. There are some that were not healed around Paul. That, see, that doesn't mean that everybody is going to be healed. Sometimes the, the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you. And uh, Johnny Erickson Tata, God hasn't healed her, but he's done mighty miracles through her life and ministry. And reproaches, and she's paralyzed from the neck down. And reproaches and needs and persecutions and distresses for Christ's sake for whom I am weak, then, for when I am weak, then I am strong. And it does seem like uh, when you're serving the Lord and you think, well, I, I don't think I did very good at that and so on. There are times that I really, be honest with you, very uh, few people on uh, YouTube, uh, that will get a few people that listen to these lessons and so on. But on occasion, there's been times when there's like 2,000 people uh, on YouTube uh, hit uh, maybe one of the lessons that we taught. And I, sometimes I thought, well, that was the, the worst one that I did. Uh, well, because it's not me. It's because the Holy Spirit working through us. And that's what happens in the ministry. And that helps keep us humble, doesn't it? Well, we're going to need to move on because uh, we're running out of time here and we didn't, haven't gotten very far. But hopefully this is being used, helpful for you. He says, I have become a fool in boasting. You, you guys have made me to say these things and tell about my life, but I, I didn't really want to. You have compelled me for I ought to have been uh, commended by you for in nothing was I behind the most eminent apostles, the other apostles, he said that before, though I am nothing. He thinks of himself as nothing. Uh, the chief of the sinners and so on. Truly the signs of an apostle were accomplished among you with all perseverance in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. All the things that, that many people that were healed through Paul's ministry and those that worked with him. And for what is it in which you were inferior to other churches, except that I myself was not burdensome to you? And he didn't take any money from them. He was a tent maker. Forgive me for this wrong. Well, see, there's, he's using um, being facetious when he says these things. And, and that's a part of speech, guys. There's nothing wrong with that. Salvador, it's good to see that you're on from the Philippines. All right. Lord bless you and your crusade. Let's pray for that as we close uh, when we get there. Now, for the third time, I am ready to come to you. And I will not be burdensome to you. All right, so he wrote the first letter. Uh, bless, <laughs> my wife is sneezing there. And the, the, the first time he wrote 1 Corinthians, and then now he's writing 2 Corinthians. Uh, but he is planning to go there still. For I do not seek yours, but you. For the children ought to lay up uh, for themselves uh, for the parents, but the parents for the children, all right? So he is a parent to them. He's led many to the Lord. And I will, uh, I will very gladly spend and be spent for your souls, though the more abundant I love you, the less I am loved. It just seems like the more he pours his love on them, then it just seems like it gets worse and worse. But by that as, or be that as it may, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty, you see, they think he, uh, a few of those were saying in Corinth, he's just crafty. 
uh, I caught you by cunning. <laughs> and so uh, this tricking them into receiving the gospel. Did I take advantage of you by any of those whom I sent to you? When he sent Titus and Timothy and so on, I urged Titus and sent our brother with him. Uh, did And that would be Luke, Luke, I believe, that went with him. Did Titus take advantage of you? Did we not walk in the same spirit? Did we not walk in the same steps? Again, do you think that we excuse ourselves to you? We speak before God in Christ, but we do all things, beloved, for your edification. For I fear lest when I come, I shall not find you such as I wish, and that I shall be found by you such as you do not wish. He doesn't want to go to them. Hello, Gabriel. Lord bless you. And we'll get the the, the certificates to you soon. I shall be found by you such as you do not wish. And so he's going to become really angry if they're not going to listen to him. He is there would be angry and sin not. He is going to do that. Uh, if he has to do that and go there that way, but he doesn't want to go to them in anger and straighten them out like an apostle can do, okay? A uh, missionary that led them to the Lord. Lest there be contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, backbitings, whisperings, conceits and tumults. He doesn't want any of that in the church. Lest when I come again, my God will humble me among you. In other words, he's going to uh, lose his temper. Uh, he doesn't want to have to be angry with them. He wants them to get it straightened out before he comes. And I shall mourn for many who have sinned before and have not repented of the uncleanness, fornication, and lewdness which they have practiced. So um, they did. The one man that we talked about and uh, from 1 Corinthians that was living with his mother or mother-in-law, uh, or his stepmother, I mean, uh, he did get right. Uh, Paul talks about to welcome him back into the church and uh, their turning away from him and not giving him a welcome uh, in the church that did work and uh, and so but there's others he said that are still living in lewdness or immorality and people i will tell you that uh, i um, edited a book from nigeria and uh, this brother was talking about how that in the congregation, sometimes people would be on their cell phone and they would be looking at pornography. There was a pastor that he went to his home and the Lord revealed to this brother that on his laptop, there was lewd pictures and things that should not be there. And the man started to deny it at first and he said, no, uh, it's there. And then he admitted it. And so uh, there's a high percent of Christian leaders that are into pornography. There's a high percent of the congregation that is into pornography. That needs to stop. That needs to turn around. God needs to, uh, the judgment begins at the house of God. That's what the word of God says. And I believe the persecution is coming for Christians around the world and here in the United States as well. And where is it going to start? God is going to deal with churches and individuals that claim to be Christians that are not truly born again, and they're not living for the Lord, and they're dabbling in demonism and playing with Ouija boards and, and tarot cards and all these things and going to seances and so on. That is going to be judged by God in no uncertain terms. And uh, so that's what Paul is saying. These things need to be dealt with immediately and taken care of. How can we be holy in God 
and be involved in these things that are contrary to the Word of God. And so some people, they don't uh, see the importance of this book of 2 Corinthians, and they hardly ever get into it. I've been a Christian for many years, people, and over 60 years. And so I know that hardly ever do you hear from this book. And, um, oh, well, that was for the Church of Corinth. No, it's for us and the church today. And so we need to be serious about these things. All right, well, I trust that, and I wanted to share with you one person uh, that I um, trust in this area that we talked about, um, people having near-death experiences and sharing their testimony. I love hearing from that. But again, I, I refer you to Randy K. Ministries on YouTube. And then also he talks about other people that uh, they have had a near-death experience. In other words, where they passed away, they were clinically dead, but the Lord allowed them to come back, even as he did for Brother Paul. And so, um, and we see that in Acts chapter 14. Okay, well, our time is up, but we're going to pray for our brother and his ministry and their Philippines and the crusader ministry they're having. We're going to pray for Brother Gabriel, and he's a leader of a Christian school, and he church and outreach. He's an evangelist there in Kenya, and I've been there three times to uh, work with him there and in conference meetings and that. And also, uh, let's continue to pray for Esther in India. She has, I think, about 24 orphans that she raises there. And then also her husband is a pastor of the church, Emmanuel. So let's just go to prayer. Father, thank you that we can come to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We pray together in unity and in agreement that you will bless mightily in the crusade meetings that are in the outreach reach meetings there in the Philippines, that you'll use our brother and others mightily as they spend time in prayer looking and uh, soaking this evangelistic ministry in prayer. And the same thing for Brother Gabriel and help him there in Kenya to be continually used mightily of you. And we thank you for the graduation of these eight um, people that went through their Bible school there in Kenya and now are graduating. Bless them, use them mightily. We pray, Father, for others in uh, India and uh, Esther and her husband, Emmanuel. Uh, Lord, just bless and use, continue to use them mightily, supply for their needs and in the ministry there. And we do pray, Father, right now for those around the world that are Christians that are suffering in jail or their things, their house being destroyed, their church being destroyed. And Lord, just help them to go on from there and be uh, thankful that they can suffer for you, suffer for the name of Christ. And Father, for those in Israel, many are Christians and Israel that are going through the suffering along with the other Jewish people that are not saved. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem as scripture tells us to pray. Lord, we want to bless Israel because you said you will bless those who bless Israel and you will curse those who curse Israel. So we'll bless Israel and continue to bless them and Lord, give them victory. And their victory is our victory as well. So we thank you for that. And we just pray now all of these things, Lord, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Shalom, brothers and sisters in Christ, and God bless you. And we will see you, God willing, tomorrow. Uh, so stay close to the Lord.